Hi, this is Courtney with CAD Company again. Uh, I figured today we'd talk a little about everybody's favorite subject, uh, pollution control devices. Uh, these came on the Cadillacs and a bunch of other vehicles too. Uh, one of the items here I've got in my hand here is, is, uh, is everybody calls it a smog pump, but it's a AIR pump, air injection reactor pump. Uh, what it does, it blows air into the exhaust ports to continue the burning of, of the, of the uh, gasoline, you know, that didn't get completely burnt in the, the, uh, the cylinder. So uh, there's, you know, quite a bit of escapes. Now, everybody, you know, throws these suckers away, you know. I mean, it, it's like, I mean, yeah, there, there's some reasons to, to, to get rid of them, mostly because they, they've locked up, you can't get new ones. Uh, they're ugly, don't look good on your build. Um, um, like I said, there's a, there's a list of ways guys, you know, want to get rid of them. But uh, truth is, this is one of the most effective means of pollution control. Uh, in order, in fact, in order to uh, adjust carburetors like we did in the day with, the, you know, the sun machines and everything, we'd have to block these off because it, it, it cleaned up the exhaust so much we had to pinch off the hose going to it, uh, going to the engine. And, uh, you know, otherwise we would get false readings. And uh, anyway, uh, you, know, you know, there's, uh, like I say, a whole list of reasons that a guy might want to delete this unit. But the one reason, uh, one of the reasons not to delete it is if you think you're going to get more power or it runs better. I mean, this, this thing wasn't in good shape, probably doesn't take one horsepower to run it. You know, and if, and if you can feel that, you're very talented. Um, anyway, we do sell pulleys to delete these things. Um, I was going to go through uh, how, you know, other, uh, re you know, ways that they work. Up on top here, this is called the diverter valve. It's got a vacuum hose go to it. I know most guys, when they're, when they're kids, they found out that they could be running down the road and they could turn the ignition off and then turn the ignition back on and get this big old backfire, which usually exploded your, your parents' muffler. Um, well, that's kind of the reason for this, uh, because it blows so much air into the exhaust. When you decelerate, if this sucker doesn't get turned off, you got enough oxygen in there to get start getting some of that, you know, weird little backfire, you know, boop, 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 boop. You, you know, you'll, you'll hear it in the, in the exhaust. So anyway, this vacuum line, when, when, the, when the vacuum gets high, like from decelerating, it turns this thing off, okay? Um, now, it blew air through this hose here that connects, and then it went to on the caddy, and there was that tin manifold that connected both cylinder heads, okay? And it had a check valve sitting on top. Um, now, that's another thing you can't get replaced, those, those tin manifolds. Uh, they would rust out, or they'd get destroyed from guys prying on them and not knowing how they actually connected to the head. Um, anyway, the air would go through there, and Cadillac uh, was one of the few that actually did the plumbing in the head. There's, there's, there's a passage that goes the length of the head, and that way you, you can see, like right here is where we, we plug it off. I mean, if we're, not, if we're not using it. This hole goes all the way through, and then connecting to that are or a small hole in each exhaust port, okay? Now, uh, you may find that some heads don't even have those passages, or you know, or like if you swapped heads, you know, uh, I've seen some that only have some of the exhaust ports have that hole drilled through them. And uh, uh, anyway, and the reason that these kind of went by the wayside <laughs> was when they, when the, with the advent of catalytic converters, okay? Uh, catalytic converters 
we know they get really hot. And when you start pumping more air into there with more burn, they generally get hotter yet. So they, they started restricting how much air is going through there. And then uh, with uh, other, other engine controls, they, they figured how they could turn them on and off. And then, then you'll see some, some vehicles, I'm, uh, not necessarily Cadillacs, but uh, then they started putting air pumps back on. But the purpose was, it, you, you've probably seen it on some Cadillac converters, they'd have this other little pipe that went to it. And what it did was about in the middle of the Cadillac converter, they were using it to blow some fresh air in it to cool the cat down. Because if the cat gets overheated, that's when you start smelling that rotten egg smell, and that's NOx, okay? And that's what makes a lot of the pollution. That's the smog you can see. You know, carbon monoxide is, you know, the, the silent, deadly, you can't see it, kill it, you know? Well, NOx is, it's almost a little bit on the opposite. I mean, you, you you can smell it, you can see it, you know what I mean? Um, so anyway, for a brief stint there, they started putting smog pumps back on, but they were, or air pumps, but they were uh, not so much plumbing them on the engine side, but they were running them into the cat to help cool that, that dude down. Um, like I say, we do have pulleys to omit the, the pump. Uh, the engines that had the pump used uh, the same belt to run the water pump and it, and then uh, uh, by, by series of running another belt to the alternator, it, anyway, basically run water pump and alternator and itself. And uh, like I say, uh, it, it's hard to find new ones of them and, you know, uh, most Places that have emission control uh, laws still in effect for those old ones. You could probably still find one if you had to, but I think the cars are getting old enough where they're probably exempt. Uh, but you have to check with your local authorities on that. So anyway, um, that's about it on the on the air pump system. I'm gonna in, in a second here. We're gonna go into the EGR. Another item to help control pollution was the EGR valve, uh, exhaust gas recirculation. Uh, this is something that some hot rodders think they need removed because race engines and most manifold uh, companies don't have a provision for them. Um, the way it works is there's an exhaust passage, you know, of course on, on this caddy here that that runs underneath the, the carburetor from an, an exhaust port. Um, in fact, a lot of guys will see this, this opening here, you know, and they think, oh, that's a hole that's gotta be covered. No, that's, that's just on top of that exhaust port. And I think it's kind of like a cooling, cooling effect because it gets awful hot. And what happens is you've got, you've got exhaust coming across underneath the carburetor to help in, in uh, cold starts, uh, warming up, um, things like that. Well, they tapped in to that exhaust port. There's two holes here. One goes to the exhaust port. The other one goes to a couple passages underneath the carburetor. You took the carburetor off, you see the little passages pointing straight up, okay? And the idea is, they're taking exhaust gas, which uh, should should have no oxygen left in it and no uh, very little uh, fuel, but there is some fuel uh, in and it puts it back into the intake manifold to be recycled. Okay. Um, one way to check and see if your passages are open, this is the diaphragm. You can reach underneath with your fingers and you can lift it up or down, okay? That'll let you know if it's stuck, okay? Uh, with the engine running, you, 
and you do that, you can hear hear a noticeable RPM change if it's if the passages are clear. Okay. Now, uh, replacement valves uh, are are getting to be more universal, which they which a lot of them will come with different. Uh, a bunch of discs, the little orifice sizes uh, to fit your needs. A lot of times they'll come with a, you check the number on top, they'll tell you what uh, what disc you need. But yeah, like I say, you'd actually use that to kind of tune it. Also, um, the benefits of it, you know, you go like, well, why would I want a plum exhaust back into the intake and to go into the cylinders. Well, cylinders can run as high as like 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? When that happens, another thing happens. It, it makes NOx, nitrogen oxide. Um, there again, previously we talked about catalytic converters doing that when they got too hot. Same thing goes on in the cylinders when they get too hot. They found by injecting a little bit of exhaust gas back in, it actually cools the cylinder about 500 degrees. Uh, there's some benefits from that. It can it can cure uh, pre-ignition. You know the ping you hear like you're running low octane gas. Um, uh, there, there are some vehicles. I remember the the, the fuel injected Cadillac Seville's, and that you know it had to be operating right or the car just didn't drive right um, anyway problems that can occur occur with it is they can get carboned up the the, the little valve seat can get stuck which can, can cause a, a bad idle because even that idle so it's not supposed to be turned on uh, it's supposed to be ported vacuum uh, at idle uh, the diaphragm can go bad um, or it can get bent you know, manhandling it around. Um, anyway, we, we do sell block off plates for these two, for someone who wants a cleaner look and doesn't think they need to run one. Um, like I say, uh, the, the benefits are, you know, clean air um, uh, can help with uh, low RPM drivability with, with, with the, the ping and pre-ignition. Um, we also, we just got done running this engine today and, and uh, uh, we, we did a back-to-back -back test with, with or without the EGR working. And it actually made more horsepower and torque with the EGR working. So, I mean, that's, that's a big surprise to me too. So uh, anyway, we made, made I think it was about eight more horsepower and on, on the average through the whole power pull from two grand up, uh, the average power was like six horsepower more. Um, so that's uh, pretty amazing for a piece of smog equipment. So anyway, uh, you guys make up your own mind if you're gonna run one or not. Uh, like say they they are kind of tunable if you get one that you think's coming on too soon in the vacuum line itself you can put a um, uh, it's like it's like a restrictor Napa and other auto parts uh, sell it It'd be a, a delay device in other words to, to delay it from coming on um, you might find if you got a big cam in it and you got to run a lot of throttle opening you'll be getting vacuumed too soon to it, and it might be coming on too soon for you. Well, in a case like that, you can put one of the valves in there, <clears throat> or you can drill your throttle plates and shut the throttle some more. It should take care of it too. So anyway, uh, that's just a couple of the uh, pollution control devices and, uh, and how they work. We are talking about how the uh, air injection pump pumps air through the cylinder head. Here, here's the, the hole it goes into. It goes all the way through the head. Uh, that's where the manifold would hook up. Comes out these ports here in the exhaust. Okay? So it's blowing air right, right into the exhaust. 
And then we were talking about the, the EGR, where it gets this exhaust gas. Well, here's, here's another exhaust port here. See this big hole here? It goes up to the middle of the head. Let me flip it around here. Comes up to here. And this is what goes underneath uh, the carburetor through the intake manifold. <clears throat> now this here, part of the casting, on top of this, we, I get a lot of, a lot of phone calls saying, this hole in the head's open, the gasket's wrong, you know, we got to cover that up, water's going to come out of it, this, that, and the other. Well, it goes nowhere, absolutely nowhere, okay? Uh, where we'll see, like if you, if you wash your engine, you got to get a little water down in there, and then when the, and then they start it up, this port gets hot from the exhaust, and all of a sudden they see water boiling in that hole, and they think they blew a gasket. So, anyway, I don't know how many times I've answered that one. So anyway, this hole goes nowhere, doesn't need to be covered up. Um, I think if this was all really, really solid, it might lead to cracking or, or another problem. But anyway, there was no sense in them filling that all in with cast iron. So you know, those guys that want to get... plug the, the exhaust port holes for the AAR pump passages. I mean, you can do that. We found it really doesn't make any difference. Uh, but uh, some guys with uh, turbos and that, they'll, you know, they feel like with the back pressure, it can be swapping holes and that. But really, when you got back pressure, you got back pressure. It's affecting them all. But what I've done in the past is the, the opening going through the head here is this big old opening it gets it gets full of carbon you can take a, a drill bit what works well is a, a concrete bit because it's got that little slice of carbide at the end and you can clean that hole out now the this hole it doesn't line up exactly because I believe they drilled it from two two ends so so you only be able to drill like you know half of it at a time and then and then I've taken a steel rod <clears throat> and put some epoxy in there and drive a steel rod in there you just need to go you know past to where the, the little port opening is and the other benefit of that is as you can see the casting here strengthens uh, the rocker arm support bosses okay and, and and just think of it you got a nice steel rod in there making the head stronger so I mean that's that's something you guys can play with if you want that's a, a trick I did on uh, some of the, the Bonneville engines uh, uh, the ones that didn't that uh, didn't have a solid port you can get you can get some uh, some of these heads it's got the boss there but it's not even drilled well that's cool you don't have to do anything to them so anyway if you got a lot of extra time and feel the need clean out the port shove a rod in it and that way you don't even have to mess with those little little portholes in, in each port.